thing I learned how to kayak long before I learned how to talk and walk, that's for sure. I'm not sure I agree with the quote that it's, that it's all about the journey because for me there's a competitive aspect that I'm a racer and I love to win. I wouldn't say that I'm trying to prove something to people or that I'm trying to prove something to myself really. I mean, but I'm sure there's a little bit of both. When I was growing up, we lived in an RV, and we were always parked by a river because we would just go wherever my dad wanted to kayak. I was born directly into the sport of kayaking. And I specialize in long distance mountain biking. What it means is that I ride my bike for a really long time, and a 10 hour race would be a short race for me. A, a race or an event where I get to sleep in my own bed that night is, is a sprint. <laughs> Basically, soloing is just rock climbing without a rope, without protection. It's basically the most distilled type of climbing. I think the beauty of soloing is that it's just so simple. You just go out by yourself with your shoes and your chalk bag and you climb it. In my world, the only constant is that there's no constant. When I'm at a rapid or a waterfall, I may pick my line, but it's never the same, it's always changing. I do have a suffering skill. My nickname's the Queen of Pain. I kind of put my head down and turn the voices inside my head off. It takes hours and days to kind of strip away all the exterior to kind of find out who you are as a person. Yeah, there's no real ritual associated with soloing. I just put on my shoes, I chalk up, and I rock on. To me, the definition of the zone is when you don't feel the burning in your legs, you don't hear your heart rate. So you're, you're basically just on autopilot and everything seems easy. When all the, the movements just feel so crisp and precise and perfect, you don't feel pain in your fingers as much. You can really like torque on them super hard. And, I mean, you just feel stronger a lot of the time. Whenever I'm coming up to the lip of a big waterfall, everything else goes blank. I'm just focusing on what I need to do. It's a big question to ask why I soloed. But, I mean, part of it is the challenge, like the fact that it's hard, the fact that it demands a lot from you. And part of it is the, just the simplicity of soloing is, is really appealing to it. It's just you and the route and, and climbing. I don't think there are that many things in life that require the 100% focus that you get out of solo. You know, it's kind of like the most pure form of climbing. Right? One of the main reasons I kayak is just the awe of finding new beautiful places. It's the feeling of being somewhere new that nobody else has ever been or you've never been and just the beauty of what's happening around you. I kayak because it allows me to be who I want to be. I'm always afraid at some point Without the fear, it wouldn't be the same. Overcoming the fear is what really makes hiking amazing. And people have asked me why I do this over and over again, and the best thing I've come up with is because I have to. I don't know how to live my life any other way.
I do this because I love it, and I'm inspired by the places that I go. I, I feel this need to explore and to be somewhere new and see what's around the next corner. Yeah, I guess every once in a while you have those moments where you're like, this is really magical, like this is, like, this is awesome. Without kayaking, I don't know where my life would be. It definitely wouldn't be the same. It just drives my life. Tapping into who I am as a person is something that I need to do on a regular basis because you never really get to that place in normal life. And that's the point where it's perfect. It's nirvana.